If you're like me, you've thought to yourself, why did Game Freak design such a cool Pokemon and then make it so incredibly bad and unusable? Well, I'm here today to tell you that it's pretty much true. It Tropius sucks. However, in today's video, we get it to do some really cool stuff and it's actually kind of an asset to the team. So, I've got myself a new team where my main objective is to get Tropius to whoop some ass and my opponent is working with a pretty standard looking Sandstorm team with a whole bunch of very scary overused Pokemon. So we've got our work cut out for us, but let's get into the match here. They're gonna go ahead and lead off with the Hungry Ass Hippo as I decide to toss out my mess for it. Uh, it's mainly because I would like the Stealth Rock support, plus this little Rasta dude and his four Dreadlocks can handle kind of any lead matchup, uh, plus get a nice little pivot going with U-Turn if need be. So, um, of course he kicks up the Sandstorm, it's gonna be annoying for me, great for them because of course they're a Sandstorm based team, and I just decide to toss out my Stealth Rock. Gonna kinda punish switches, Plus, it doesn't look like they have any um, hazard removal with Rapid Spin or Defog. So, it looks like these are going to hang out for a while. We actually end up trading Stealth Rocks, uh, just comparing sizes out here. And I actually do have the Rapid Spin support on my team, which is going to be the Tentacruel. Uh, which could be a potential nice switch here. However, I don't want to worry about the Earthquake. I mean, he's not going to click it against Mesprit. Uh, so, I actually just decided to go right for the U-Turn Pivot here to see what they want to do. I uh, do expect a switch, and this actually works out pretty nicely because he goes into... Uh, the Mawile here. So, this puts me in a great position just to switch into whatever I would like here. Uh, Mawile is not the scariest Pokemon against my team, but if this thing potentially started to set up, uh, it can it can be pretty scary. So, I decide to go into Entei. Now, Entei is a Pokemon that literally every time I bring this thing, is just an incredible asset. Literally nothing in the game wants to switch into a Choice Banded Sacred Fire. Uh, plus, more often than not, you end up getting the burn as well. So, I come in, unfortunately have to take that Stealth Rock damage, because I wasn't quite able to rapid spin it away. And then the Sandstorm hurts, so I'm, I'm down a, a good chunk, although I just go right for the Sacred Fire here. It doesn't really matter, but he switches into the Garchomp, and after some Stealth Rock damage, of course, you know, it's not going to do a whole lot with the Sacred Fire. Uh, but with that really high burn chance, it's pretty likely I'm going to grab the burn here, and I actually do. So Entei's out here making the Garchomp call him daddy, and you love to see it. So I do want to keep around the Entei. It's just great support, especially with the extreme speed. Uh, Choice Band Entei is just something you want to keep around. So I do have to switch here, and I decide to go right into the Mesprit, because it's likely that it's just going to go for the Earthquake. Um, I can obviously dodge that with the Levitate, plus this thing can't really Earthquake its way out of a wet paper bag because a burnt Garchomp is a safe Garchomp. So, I bring in the floating Mesprit, able to dodge the Earthquake like my little pixie self, and this puts me in a pretty good spot because this Garchomp can't really do much to me here. It's kind of rendered useless in this match for the most part. I mean, it's, it's down to half health, it's burnt, and it doesn't have a whole lot of fight left in him. So I decided to just actually stay in and go for the Psychic, I'm thinking. Any other physical attack I can probably take really easily. Dragon Claw pretty much does nothing, and the bulk of Mesprit is unmatched. Look at this dude. I'm able to hit it with a Psychic, not able to quite grab the kill even after the burn damage. Um, but I'm totally fine letting Mesprit take another little tiny chunk of damage uh, if it means being able to take care of the Garchomp. So, uh, that's one effective way to just get rid of a Sand Shark. I'll tell you what, just get, just throw some fire at it and then he's just done for. So I go for another Psychic here. Um, he just decides to stay in, kind of just sacks off the Garchomp. Uh, does in fact bring me below half, which is fine, uh, because after I've got that Stealth Rock up, Mesprit's kind of just a, a decent switch in, plus it was great for the Garchomp anyway, uh, so plus with that thing being gone, Rost has kind of used most of his utility at this point, but um, able to take care of that thing, which is amazing, and you love to just see any OU Pokemon go down in the face of Mesprit, so... Uh, he gets a free switch and decides to go into another just annoying sandy asshole, which is <laughs> which is the Gliscor. Um, these things are nearly impossible to kill, and with that toxic heal, it's just such an asshole. But not really a whole lot I can do here, as I don't really want to uh, go for a hard switch. So I decide to stay in, as he actually ends up going for the knockoff. Somehow I'm able to live, which is amazing. And this allows me to go for a U-turn. Now going second on the U-turn there is actually super nice, because this allows me a free switch into my Raticate. The reason why that's good is because I can come in, and then I don't have to wait the turn to get my burn. Uh, joint just comes in, it gets burnt immediately. I take some Stealth Rock damage, so we're a little a little beat up Joint, but I get that burn going, and this Raticate is ready to get smoking. Of course, I have the Guts ability, so with that burn, uh, I get increased physical attack damage, plus with the Stab Facade, it's gonna do a whole lot, and it's kind of my best answer uh, to this Gliscor right now, because I go for the, uh, the Facade there, I do get the critical hit, now depending on if that thing was max defense, it likely would have lived that. However, I could have taken at least one Earthquake, and that was kind of my plan anyway. 
uh, was to basically just dedicate Raticate to killing that there Gliscor. So either way, it gets taken care of, and that is absolutely amazing. So now he gets the free switch, decides to bring in the dude with the pink shirt, who is Alakazam. I, I go for the Sucker Punch, and not a lot of people see Raticates running around, but this thing is an absolute threat. He doesn't expect the Sucker Punch that is going to end up taking care of the Alakazam. I, I really expected that to be Focus Sash. Uh, kind of surprised that it wasn't there. Uh, but that's pretty solid. Raticate's able to just kill two strong-ass Pokemon, and this is why I love the joint. I swear to God, I've been using this thing for like 12 damn years at this point, and it's been fucking people up like the plague for, for as long as I've had him. So he ends up going into the Hippowdon here. Of course, I don't really want to hard switch into anything, so I'm like, all right, Raticate, let's just go for another facade. I don't care how defensive this Hippo is. It's going to do a whole lot of damage. does a big chunk to that thing, and unfortunately, an Earthquake does take care of me. So Raticate, I'm proud of you, buddy. Um, but the good news is this finally opens up the door. The banana lad finally gets to shine. I come in, just Nana swinging, ready to get some shit going. Now a quick rundown of the set on this thing. Uh, Tropius gets a unique ability called Harvest, which allows you to basically use your berry if you're in berry range, and then it can have a chance to harvest it back, use it again, and the berry basically never goes away. So my plan here is to go for a substitute to the point where I knock myself into berry range. Now he goes for the Ice Fang, because for whatever reason, this fucking hippo can summon the power of ice at the ground hippo. I don't know. But uh, regardless, it's not too big of a deal because I'm basically trying to substitute my way uh, down to my lychee berry, which is going to increase my attack. Now, this thing is Dragon Dance because I'd like to get some speed. But it's looking like in this point in the match, if I can get myself down uh, to get a couple attack boosts, I could potentially sweep the rest of the team here. So... One more substitute is going to put me in berry range, which is amazing, just what we wanted. I go ahead and pop that lychee berry, and it gives me a clean attack boost. Plus, the beanbag is still out here uh, to kind of protect me. So, he actually predicts a switch here, goes for the earthquake. Surprisingly, potentially thought I was going to bring in the tentacruel there. Um, but regardless, that is totally fine by me. As Tropius says, you know what, I'm still actually hungry. I bring back the berry that I just ate, pop another one, now I'm sitting at plus two attack. And this Tropius is absolutely ready to go on a tear. Uh, so I go for the Leaf Blade here, thinking he'll probably just stay in. I'm behind the substitute, looking good, and he actually ends up switching into the one Arch Nemesis, which is Heatran. So of course the Lava Frog is not going to take much from the Leaf Blade here, but I do actually have Earthquake coverage on this Tropius as well, so I'm thinking I can definitely grab the kill. Uh, now the annoying thing is that the Sandstorm is slowly whittling me down, and it looks like Tropius only has a few turns. Unless the sandstorm goes away by the time I need it to. Uh, but Banan's out here just getting hit by the storm. Totally fine by me as I'm behind the substitute looking amazing. And I just go right for the earthquake here. Now he's kind of backed against the corner at this point. He's staring the evil bananas right in the face. And there's just nothing you can do because I got that sub up. So he ends up saving the Heatran for later. Goes into the hip Howdon. Uh, but of course, after a couple attack boosts, Earthquake is easily going to be able to take care of the Hippo. And he's down to two Steel Labs, which is going to be the Mawile and the Heatran. Um, so unfortunately, I'm actually not even getting any more Harvest here. It's just a chance to roll um, that Harvest ability to activate another Lychee Berry. But at, at plus two attack, it's not looking like I really need any more help. Uh, but it's just fun to see Harvest do stuff. So he ends up going into Mawile here. I'm thinking potentially Sucker Punch, but it doesn't matter because unfortunately the Sandstorm is still up. But I'm able to get one last Earthquake off. I can take care of the Mawile, and then it's just me against the Heatran. So Tropius, I'm absolutely proud of you, but if this Sandstorm was not up, Tropius would have proceeded to sweep the, the Heatran, and that kills half of this dude's team. Uh, but luckily for him, he was using the Sandstorm team, and that last little bit of chip is going to take care of the Tropius. But... Um, all I need to do at this point is just basically go into the Heracross. I'm Choice Scarf, I'm able to outspeed, and Heracross, especially coming into more Stealth Rock damage, is not going to be able to do it. It would have been extremely satisfying to see Tropius kill a damn OU oh, whore ass Heatran, but it did at least force this thing out. It basically killed it, and now in that now the door is open essentially for Heracross to uh, kind of do his Heracross stuff. Choice Scarf Heracross is a great mon to keep in the back a lot of the time. Uh, late game, you're going to be able to do exactly this, and a close combat right to the old face is going to kill uh, the Lava Frog there. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. Let me know if you guys like seeing this team in action. It's a really fun one to use, and Tropius is the absolute goat. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.